On this edition of VCU Insight, VCU inaugurates its fifth president, Dr. Michael Rao. We'll investigate how VCU police use crime alerts. And a fun way for the VCU community to stay in shape. VCU Insight starts right now. Hello, and welcome to VCU Insight. I'm Justin James. And I'm Nikhil Wiggum. Thank you for joining us. Last month, the VCU community formally, and for some finally, inaugurated its fifth president, Dr. Michael Rao. Insight's Tommy Lopez was there and has the story more than two years in the making. And formally declare you president of Virginia Commonwealth University. VCU held Dr. Michael Rao's inauguration ceremony October 14th at the Siegel Center. Thank you so much for being here to celebrate. It was delayed recognition for the school's fifth president, who took office in July of 2009. Here, it's like, going, you know, it's like buying a used car. You know, you got to take it on this two and a half year test drive. Governor McDonald joked with the 1,000 people in attendance before praising Rao's efforts. U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan also applauded VCU. It's a moment to take a collective pause on campus, to stop, to reflect, and to affirm VCU's critical role in building that future. The event was part of a month of lectures, food drives, and other events on campus. Faculty and alumni joined more than 350 students being recognized for academic achievement. My message today is that we, as a university, must recommit ourselves. Our guiding star has to be excellence. During the ceremony, Dr. Rao spoke of VCU's past and how the VCU community has assisted in the school's progression. Those in attendance reflect back on the influence Dr. Rao has already had on this university. Sort of having the two and a half years of all the things he's already accomplished and then recognizing that as president, you sort of have, as he said, passed a prologue. You sort of know what the future is going to be. He really is so emblematic of what's going on at uh, VCU and in Richmond. He's enthusiastic, he's youthful, and he is just such a smart uh, person, and he's got, a, he's got such integrity as a leader. Students have also seen the benefits of his term. As I can tell you, he's very concerned with academics, very concerned with student safety, uh, very concerned with faculty and providing that education that his students need and deserve. From what I can tell, he's very dedicated to the student body. Uh, I'm an individual who relies heavily on financial aid and scholarship and grants, and he's done a very good job. Rao emphasizes student experience as he continues his own journey at VCU. For VCU Insight, I'm Tommy Lopez. Close to a thousand people were in attendance for the ceremony. It capped off a week-long celebration. VCU also used President Michael Rao's inauguration to focus on giving back to Richmond and the surrounding communities. The university launched the Pound Out Hunger Campaign, the largest food drive in school history, over the week of October 7th. The event was supposed to only last a week, but because of the great response, the drive has been extended to the end of the month. The goal was to collect as much peanut butter and tuna as possible to help support the Feed More organization. Why peanut butter and tuna? Feedmore says they wanted to provide the protein necessary for half a million area meals, which means 10,000 pounds of food. This was the first time the university as a whole participated in a food drive. This food drive is just amazing because it is involving all parts of the campus, uh, including the students, the faculty, uh, parents, alumni. Feed More is the umbrella organization for the Central Virginia Food Bank, Meals on Wheels, and the Community Kitchen. The final weight of the food plus the financial donations will be announced on November the 1st. Most students can't travel to Africa, but they can see what the environment is like, thanks to the latest exhibit at the Anderson Gallery on VCU's Monroe Park campus. The Environment and Object Recent African Art Exhibition focuses on 16 modern artists who are mostly natives of the continent. They say their art pieces are inspired from everyday materials and their effect on the environment there. According to the Anderson Gallery, more than 1,500 people have visited the exhibition since its early opening in September. One room is the interactive art gallery. We are numerous and our problems too. Guests get a sense of a street in the country of Senegal on Africa's west coast. Some visitors say it's more than just the art itself are focused on like surface and like how light works with the space and like that's just what I'm like really into that's I guess that's what I see how things are arranged. 
The curators come from Skidmore College in upstate New York. Associate Professor of Art History Lisa Aronson and Tame Museum Director John Weber. Environment and Object, Recent African Art is free and open to the public and it'll be at the Anderson Gallery until December 11th. Earlier this month, VCU saw a spike in on-campus crime. Each time, university officials turned to their alert communication systems to let students and the surrounding community know what was happening. Turns out there are two different systems for different kinds of emergencies and threats. Three separate and unrelated crimes took place on the Monroe Park campus in September, with the most serious being a sexual assault inside of the West Cary Street parking deck. Police have charged 21-year-old Marcelo Tolliver in connection with that incident. VCU sophomore Rebecca Wiley says she heard it taking place, and that's when she notified campus police. And so I called into the police department and they asked me what happened and where was my exact location and what I had heard. And then um, the next day I got a VCU alert about it. That email was a crime alert and it's sent to everyone on VCU campuses, including the nearly 53,000 students, faculty and staff. It's part of the VCU alert system. The VCU crime email alerts are different from the VCU text alerts, which are sent directly to students' phones. We asked Police Chief John Venuti, why haven't they implemented the same technology? Uh, what we do for the crime alerts is we distribute those via student emails because that's generally not a situation that represents a significant risk right this second. Like the 5.8 magnitude earthquake that rocked Virginia in August. That's the last time VCU officials sent an immediate text alert. More than 16,000 people are sent the alerts which they need to sign up for. Wiley says she appreciates VCU police keeping students informed. They acted quickly because it was the next day and I felt good because I did call it in, but it's also really terrifying that people are getting hit and struck like this on campus. The text alerts reportedly cost the university $1.40 per subscriber and they're currently just over half full of their 30,000 subscriber license. Well, like the police, veterans also help keep us safe. Our own Nakia Wiggum is with one in the studio to talk about a new week at VCU dedicated to veterans. My guest is Jonathan Hoggett, a VCU student and president of the Student Veterans Association. He's using his Army experience to help initiate a Military Appreciation Week at VCU. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more like what the SBA has for Military Appreciation Week? Um, it's kind of funny. Last semester we tried to get a Veterans Day or something going on, but it really didn't work out with timing and whatnot. Uh, this semester we've decided that veterans don't deserve just Veterans Day. We've actually decided to make an entire Veterans Week. So we've got uh, events Monday through Friday. Can you explain some of those events that are going to be happening? Uh, yeah. Uh, Monday, Commissioner Galani, who's the Commissioner of uh, Veterans Services here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, will be speaking to veterans. Um, Wednesday, Lou Zamperini, he's a World War II veteran and POW who wrote the book Unbreakable. He'll be flying in from California to uh, present here at VCU. And on Friday, um, the night that we had the Final Four banner unveiled at the Siegel Center during the men's game, it, uh, Rodney will actually be in BDUs, and it'll be a veteran's game. What is a BDU? Uh, battle dress uniform. He'll be wearing the top and the bottom with uh, patches and boots and everything that game. Okay. And what is the SBA doing on the actual Veterans Day? Uh, veterans Day, we actually have a ceremony during the day in the Commonwealth Ballroom, and that will go on all morning into the afternoon and then it will climax with the uh, game. Okay, so can you tell us about your military experience and how it's helped you be a student leader? Uh, military experience, I've uh, been in since 1998, uh, kind of a long time, I'm an older student. Um, I was a non-commissioned officer in the Army, so training and leading soldiers as many as sometimes at 40 or 50. Um, has given me the ability to work with uh, dozens of people to motivate them and get the overall mission done. How many, well, when did the SBA start at VCU and how many members or how has the growth since it started? Uh, it's been around since the early 70s, but we never had a constitution. So by rule, it's not a student organization until there is an actual constitution. This last semester, we drafted our constitution. It was notarized and it's about 11 pages long. Uh, current numbers are around 118, 
and they range only from uh, dependents to uh, members that are still in the service. Okay, how do you recruit members like the, the word that there is a student veterans association on campus? Um, it actually starts from when they first step foot on campus. We have our own orientation for veterans. Um, they've changed the form getting into, univer into, into VCU um, by placing on the form, are you a veteran? Um, we have posters around campus, um, a special office from the provost, um, part of uh, military student services that's headed by Dr. Green. Okay, and is there like a special thing that veterans can look forward to that's coming next spring? I heard there's a veteran service center that should be opening? Yes, uh, on the third floor of Harris Hall. Uh, it's supposed to be done in December. Um, it's uh, a student veterans center. It's going to have uh, lounge chairs, TVs, basically a place that veterans can go to be around veterans. And uh, it'll have workspace, computers, printers, just some place for veterans to go to, you know, if they're having an issue, they can talk to somebody that's been doing, been going through the same thing. Is it also for dependents or only for people who it'll served? Be, it'll it'll be for dependents also because they've, they haven't served, but they have served since their parents are serving. They've gone through deployments also. So you served in the Army for 13 years. Mm -hmm. How has that prepared you for Steven Spielberg's movie, Lincoln, that's going to be shot in Richmond? Uh, he looked for veterans uh, specifically just because of our background. We know facing movements. We know how to stand. We know how to talk. We know how to address officers, uh, NCOs, and that kind of thing. Did they ask you to do anything special with your face? Um, they actually asked me to grow my beard and uh, longer hair just because in that time frame there, there was that, you know, scruff on the face, little scraggly hair, that kind of stuff. And we've been speaking with Jonathan Hoggett, president of the Student Veterans Association. Military Appreciation Week is November 7th through the 11th. Thank you for dropping by and thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you. On October 14th, VCU held its second annual Campus Sustainability Day on the University Commons Plaza. The event promotes a greener student community led by the success of last year's event. It gave VCU students, faculty and staff the opportunity to see what the university is doing to encourage more environmentally friendly practices across campus. Amy Cunningham owns the local business Thief and Bandit. She sees the event as a way to reach out to potential customers. All organic um, cottons and organic jersey, and we um, print all of our fabric with non-toxic water-based ink. So, um, and everything's done in-house here in Richmond. Sustainability Day is another outreach effort of the university's continued efforts of the VCU Go Green campaign. Well, they say if you want to make it as a performer, you have to have no shame. One VCU theater event is taking that idea literally. Be it singing, acting, poetry, fight choreography, improv, stand-up comedy, or something completely off the wall, the No Shame Variety Show allows performers to practice their craft in front of a live audience. This one happened in mid-October in the Schaefer Street Theater on the Monroe Park campus. Senior theater student and MC Kyle Raish says there's only one requirement, that performers don't have a shred of embarrassment. Uh, so the variation is beautiful, as well as the fact that we have such a warm and inviting audience that comes every week, and um, there really is no shame. Whatever you are, are ready to put on the stage, we will love to accept and have be a part of our community here. No Shame is completely student-run, with performers being restricted to 10 minutes. Sign-up is on the second floor of the Singleton Center. The free variety show has been running for five years and was introduced by a grad student who took the idea from his former school and brought it to VCU. Performances are every two weeks and the next show is scheduled for November 4th. Plenty of people who aren't actors have no shame singing the songs to the 1971 musical, Grease. Thanks to VCU's theater department, Grease is headed here next week. Insight's Andrew Phillips is in the studio with two of the people making it happen. My guests are David Leong, chair of the VCU Theater Department, and Kat Wheelhan, leading the department's latest show, Grease. It will be at the Singleton Center from November 3rd through the 20th. Thank you for joining me. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. No problem. Um, so you guys are putting on Grease. It's the new show. Um, talk a little bit about how excited you are to put it on here at VCU. Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the larger musicals we've done in my 16-year tenure here. It, there seems to be a great demand from the community as well as from the student body. Uh, tickets are going really, really well, so uh, we are very pumped up about it. 
All right, cool. And um, Kat, you're playing the lead of Sandy in the show. Yes. Talk a little bit about what you were trying to portray and also how excited you are to be putting on the show. I am so excited for this show. Ev I mean, everybody knows the story of Greece. You know, it's just people have grown up with the show. And I remember seeing it when I was little and always being really, really upset at the thought of Sandy changing herself for a boy in the end. But approaching the role, looking at the text and looking at who Sandy is as a person, she's reached a point where she just gets tired of always seeing the same thing from herself. And she sees something new and exciting right in front of her. And and it is, it's exciting, it's, expi it's inspiring. And she wants to discover that part in herself. So Sandy changes because she wants to. And hopefully that's what I'm able to convey in working on this show. Okay, um, you guys uh, talked about Patty DeBeck who's had a history on Broadway. Yes. She's the director of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and she's actually had a couple of hands in Grease. Can you talk a little bit about what she's bringing to the uh, director process and also what she's done in the show Grease? Uh, well, well, what um, I, her background is for 35 years she was a dancer, singer, actor, choreographer on Broadway. So, and she, as you as you said, she did have a hand in the original revival of it. She was one of the the choreographers on the show. However, it's just so she can stretch her artistic muscles. She's doing it very differently. And uh, I'll let Kat talk about exactly what's going on now. Yes, we have been in rehearsal for about six weeks now. We started September 12th, and we'll go through about eight or nine weeks before we open. And Patty has just been absolutely wonderful. And she's assembled a team of people. Kelly Shoger is our assistant director, and Penny Ann Moss and Clayton Winters are working on choreography. There's an entire team of people working on this show, and everybody has hands in everything. And Patty, of course, just leads that train right on through. She's wonderful to work with. So can, can I add something? Mm -hmm. the, um, it's, you know, most people think because Grease is done by so many high schools that it's a really easy show to do. It's enormous in size. There are a lot of set changes that are moving in and out. And pretty much every single number is choreographed, which means you've got to teach all those actors how to dance. And, and so there's, it's a massive show in terms of the amount of movement and staging that is, that is required. All right, and you also talked that you have a, uh, a special actor on the show. You have Dr. Richard Wenzel, who works over at the MCV campus. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about how excited you are to have him <laughs> on the show? Yeah, that's He's a, a cool guy. Yeah, something, uh, um, uh, uh, Dick, we call him Dick. Dick Wenzel is one of the world's leading uh, uh, doctors uh, uh, when it comes to infectious diseases. As a matter of fact, when, uh, when the U.S. government was shut down because of the anthrax scare and all that, I remember reading various national publications that they, in where he was referred to and he was giving thoughts about what the government should do and that sort of thing. Well, we are fortunate to have Dick Wenzel, who is a doctor at the MCV hospital. We're fortunate to have him in the show in the role of Vince Fontaine. So we asked him because he was a great, he's, a, he's an enormous personality in the city of Richmond. We asked him if he would play a part and He's playing the part of, uh, of a local DJ. You want to say a little more about that? Yes, he is a local DJ of what has become the hip radio station to listen to. He plays all the rock and roll, and so, of course, no matter where the kids come from, whether they're nerds or greasers or even from other schools, this is what they listen to. So he kind of guides us through the story of the show. All right. and. Um, can you talk a little bit about the respect from the community? I know you guys mentioned a little earlier about uh, having great ticket sales. Talk about how excited you are that people, you said that you guys have sold out some shows already. Yeah, we, we have, uh, it, for our musicals, we run them three weeks. It's running the first Thursday through Sunday of November, the first, second, and the third week. Um, for our musicals, uh, I, I, some of them, I mean, most all of them sell out, or they do really, really well. It's not unusual to ha actually have uh, a waiting line of 50 people at the box office waiting to get in. We already have three performances that are sold out already. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to get people into the opening night because it is such a big deal. So we expect it to do well both with the VCU audience, the student audience, as well as the general public outside of VCU. We've been speaking with David Luong, chair of VCU Theater Department, and Kat Wheelahan, leading the department's latest show, Grease, showing at the Singleton Center from November 3rd to the 20th. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. The men's basketball season is just a week away. The Stuart C. Siegel Center has undergone some renovations that have given the 12-year-old building a facelift. VCU Insights' Andrew Phillips takes a look at the new luxury suites. VCU's run to the Final Four inspired the university and city, and it caught the nation's attention. 
With the new season just days away, the team's home, the Siegel Center, has undergone some facelifts that were in the works prior to the team's magical run. The VCU Athletic Department, through privately funded donations, is completing a $3.5 million project that will add new club seats to the Verizon Wireless Arena. It's named after the Tommy J. West Foundation, the project's biggest donor. The uh, Tommy J. West Club um, is going to add a whole other uh, dynamic to the Siegel Center. Visitors will see about 125 new club seats and suites for both University President Michael Rao and Athletics Director Norwood Teague. VCU Athletics says they've seen a rise in demand for season tickets and expect the same when individual game tickets go on sale. And we anticipate selling out um, definitely the November 11th game, the home opener, and um, probably about six to seven games this season. Due to a five-year commitment to sit in the finished product of the Tommy J. West Club, not every Ram fan will be able to enjoy the seats. But VCU Athletics says they've been able to sell out the club. The community, the university, um, is all, or all on board for it. Um, we're really excited uh, about the Tommy J. West uh, club area. The athletic department says they're shooting to have the new club seats open in time for the exhibition game on November the 3rd. We're at the latest about a week later when the Final Four banner drops from the rafters on opening night. For VCU Insight, I'm Andrew Phillips. The VCU men's basketball team has their regular season home opener on November 11th against St. Francis. There will be a Final Four ceremony before the game starts. Now here's a look at what's going on around the Richmond area. Now through November 5th, the Barksdale Theater at Will Juan is showing the production Kimberly Akimbo. Tickets are $26. Monday, November 7th, the Goo Goo Dolls are playing at the National. Ticket prices start at $30. From November 7th through November 11th, VCU will hold its first annual Military Service Appreciation Week. Speakers on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night will wrap up with a Veterans Day luncheon in the Commons Ballroom on the Monroe Park campus. Fame comedian Cat Williams would be performing at the Richmond Coliseum on November 11th. Tickets start at around $43. Also on November 11th, the VCU women's and men's basketball team will open their season at the Siegel Center. One ticket gets admission to both games and students get in for free with a valid ID. Before the men's game, they'll drop the Final Four banner commemorating the team's appearance in last season's NCAA tournament. The life of a student athlete can be tough with a normal load of classes, a full season of games, plus travel. The VCU field hockey team has found a way to ease some of the stressful times. Over the team's first couple of road trips, junior Megan Nealon and the rest of her team put together a music video to Justin Bieber's song, Somebody to Love. Nealon and some teammates thought of the idea after seeing other NCAA teams from around the country have similar videos. They posted it on YouTube and the video now has close to 2,500 hits. The song and Justin Bieber is kind of a favorite throughout our whole team. We're all believers. So, um, uh, so yeah, it just, we just kind of made it happen when we were bored on the airport and stuff. The video gave the team an opportunity to kill time on road trips, get some good laughs, and the ultimate goal was to get a retweet from Justin Bieber himself. They're still waiting on that retweet. <laughs> and finally tonight, the field hockey team isn't having all the fun with their sports. Every semester, VCU Rec Sports has different fitness programs to also get students, faculty, and staff on their feet. For his first semester at VCU, student Jason Gardner lived on the medical campus. Thing is, all his classes were on the Monroe Park campus. And there were times when I would miss the bus, so I had my bike and I would try to bike the two miles from MCV to Monroe Park and I would just be so winded afterward. He says that was his wake-up call to get fit. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, only 35% of U.S. adults over 18 exercise on a regular basis. I heard about the Ironman Challenge from the website and figured that was probably the best way I was going to get back into shape. That's the Ironman Triathlon Distance Challenge, a fitness program hosted by VCU Rec Sports for VCU students, faculty, and staff. The challenge lasts for nine weeks and it's still time to join. Just make sure you swim, cycle, and walk or run the appropriate mileage all before the second week of November. It's everything you do in a triathlon. Run or walk 26.2 miles, swim 2.4 miles, and cycle 112 miles. 
Each Challenger completes a total of more than 140 miles, roughly the same distance from Richmond to Norfolk. Professional Ironman athletes do all of this in just 17 hours. Assistant Director for Rec Sports, Ann Brown, runs the Seth Pace Challenge. She realizes it's hard to get people, especially students, to exercise on a regular basis. This program is very self-led. You come in when you want to. You report your times, you know, via email. Over 150 participants email their progress to Brown. She then updates everybody's results on the Rec Sports website. They get to see how they're doing. Like, it's just like anything. Like, if you're trying to lose weight, like, you want to write things down. Challengers receive free t-shirts once they complete the triathlon. Getting that t-shirt is a, a symbol of pride that you finish something. For Jason Gardner, physical achievement means more. It's that discipline that I'm trying to teach myself to help not only keep up with my physical standards but also help me do better in school overall. There's a chance everyone in the triathlon will complete at least 21,000 miles by the time the Ironman Distance Challenge wraps up on November 13th. Wow, 17 hours for professionals? That's a long time. I know, but students have nine weeks to do it, so that's okay. That's better. <laughs> And that does it for this edition of VCU Insight. Make sure to check us out online at insight.vcu.edu. Thank you for joining us. I'm Justin James. And I'm Nikhil Wiggum. We'll see you next time.